G'day, this is our ground cover TV special feature and since harvest is fast approaching, we thought it would be a reasonable idea to have a fellow who knows something about agricultural machinery run us through a pre-harvest checklist of what to keep in mind when preparing the header for action. Hi, I'm Chris Saunders. I'm an agriculture engineer with the University of South Australia. I have a close working relationship with the GRDC. As harvest is quickly approaching, I've decided to team up with Ground Cover TV to take a look through some of the setup tips you might want to use this season on your harvester. As there are many different brands and configurations of harvester, we'll just take a generic look at some of the settings you might want to pay attention to this season before you head out to the paddock. So an obvious place to start is with the front. This is where the crop gets cut and delivered to the front of the harvester. We might want to have a look at our knife. We have knife sections and we have knife guards. Do we have any missing knife sections or any broken knife sections? Are the knife guards in good condition or are they too worn? If we have the knife cutting well, the crop is cut smoothly and evenly and fed onto the draper belt. That's the second point to look at, the draper belt. Is the belt in good condition and is the tension correct? If the tension's good, it feeds the crop evenly to the centre of the front. Once the crop gets to the centre of the front, it's delivered to the feeder house by the centre auger. This has fingers. Are the fingers in good condition? Or are there any missing? The smoother the crop flow to the front of the harvester, the better it feeds into the whole system. So here we have an example of a rotor type machine. The front half of the rotor is used for threshing and the second half of the rotor is used for separation. If we concentrate on the threshing section, what causes the threshing action is the thresher bars on the rotor and the concave plates wrapped around the, the rotor. If we get foreign objects into the front of the rotor, such as stones or rocks that get past your stone trap, um, these can cause damage to both the thresher bars and the concave plates. In terms of the threshing action, it's important to make sure we thresh the grain properly so that we get a clean sample and we don't get any material going out the back of the harvester. To adjust the threshing action, we can either increase or decrease the rotor speed and we can also increase or decrease the gap between the concave and the rotor. The aim is to thresh the grain properly, but not to cause any damage. If we do get foreign objects into the front of the rotor, a good time to check for damage on the concave plates is when they're out of the machine. So, here we can see a grain concave out of the machine. When the concaves are out of the machine, it gives us a good opportunity to inspect the condition of the concave, the bars and the wires. If we have gaps or missing wires, we're not going to get that efficient threshing mechanism happening. As you can see, this is a narrower gap than the one uh, for the legumes that was fitted to the harvester earlier. Make sure you install the concaves that are suitable for the crop that you're going to start harvesting with this season. When the concaves are fitted to the machine, just set the gap up as per the manufacturer's specification. Obviously bearing in mind that this is going to be, need to be adjusted uh, for the crop condition at the time you start harvesting. Once the crop has been threshed, it ends up on the sieves. The sieves work by a combination of sieving and airflow. In terms of pre-season checks, we might just want to take a look at the rubbers that seal the edge around the seal, make sure they're not perished or been eaten by rodents. We can also do this around the grain pan. In terms of physical condition, we just might want to look and check there's no cracks or bent parts on the sieves as well. In terms of the setup, this is important because we want to end up with a nice clean grain sample in the grain tank and also don't want to lose too much grain over the back of the harvester. To do this, I recommend we start with the, the manufacturer's recommended settings and then we can adjust this once we get into the paddock depending on the crop condition at the time of harvest. So, what do we need to look at around the back of the harvester? Here we have a couple of options. If you're deciding to chop your straw and spread the chaff as in this case, we've got a couple of things that we might want to look at. First of all, the chopper. The chopper has rotating blades, also has fixed blades. So the condition of these blades, the sharpness, will affect the uh, way that the machine cuts the straw. We also have an adjustment so we can change the chop length. This will all depend on what you require the material going out at the back of your harvest to be, to be like. In terms of spreading the material, here in this case we have pretty simple, simple configuration. We might just want to check the bearings and the drive belt. The importance of these checks is to try and avoid downtime during harvest. 